Eva Le Gallien was one of the most prominent figures in 20th century American theater, dedicating herself to the stage through acting, directing, and producing. Though she achieved respectable success as a Broadway actress in the 1920s, starring in over a dozen plays, Le Gallien became frustrated with the commercial constraints of Broadway. She set her sights on more avant-garde works and founded her own acting company to support these artistic ambitions. In 1926, Le Gallien established the Civic Repertory Theater, mounting 34 high-quality productions over a 10-year run and employed upstart performers like a young Helen Hayes. The company struggled financially, but was critically hailed for Le Gallien's daring direction and willingness to take risks on experimental productions. It was also during her early career that she became known as one of the first advocates of the off-Broadway movement. Though the term itself did not yet exist in the 1930s, Le Gallien understood the creative and commercial advantages of smaller, more intimate theater spaces beyond the pricey real estate of Broadway. She leased small theaters to launch productions of everything from Ibsen to Oscar Wilde to Alice in Wonderland, aimed toward adventurous audiences rather than mass market appeal. Over the decades, her vision was validated many times over as Off-Broadway transformed into a thriving scene. More than a talented performer, Le Gallien paved essential ground for the growth of avant-garde and off-Broadway theater. Ava Le Gallien was born in 1899 to well-known literary parents. Her father, Richard Le Gallien, was an acclaimed English poet of the day, and her mother, Julie Noregard, was a Danish journalist. The family resided briefly in London before relocating to Paris when Ava was just three years old. Her early childhood was shaped by Parisian culture as she immersed herself in the vibrant performing arts scene. As a little girl, Le Gallien became utterly captivated by the theater. Her interest was stoked through regular trips to the Comédie Française, attending performances of classics by Molière and Racine. Enchanted by the dramatic acting she witnessed on stage, Le Gallien began putting on her own home productions as a child. At first, she would coerce her family and their servants to perform plays that she directed. Before long, she was participating in semi-professional children's theater in Paris. Le Gallien acted in her first professional production at the age of 15, selected for the role of Marie in Maurice Maeterlinck's play, Monavana, in 1914. Though World War I was just breaking out at the time, forcing most theaters to close down production, Le Gallien's brief stage debut received high praise and convinced the blossoming young performer to pursue acting as a career. When the war concluded in 1918, Le Gallien and her mother migrated permanently to the United States. They settled for a period in New York City where Eva participated in summer stock theater while still in her teens. Her fresh talent and European poise quickly caught the attention of Broadway producers, and she acquired an agent. This led to her breakout role at the age of 19 in the comedy Not So Long Ago in 1920, propelling Le Gallien rapidly into fame as a Broadway star. Over the next five years, Le Gallien starred in a long string of commercially successful Broadway productions. She churned out multiple hit plays per year in this period like Lilium, Grounds for Divorce, My Dear Children, and The Cherry Orchard. Despite her young age, Critics raved over Le Gallien's sophistication and depth as an actress. She seemed to intuitively grasp even the most challenging roles through nuanced performance technique far beyond typical ingenues of the era. Ava Le Gallien became one of the most prominent leading ladies of the 1920s Broadway scene while still in her 20s. She starred in over a dozen commercially successful plays from 1920 to 1925, working with top producers and showcasing her virtuosity across a range of roles. Many of Le Gallien's standout performances came in plays like Ferenc Molnar's Lilium, Franz Molnar's The Swan, and Sidney Howard's My Dear Children. She mesmerized audiences and critics alike through her subtle acting technique and ability to capture complex emotions. Reviewers effusively praised both her classical beauty and penetrating talent. Despite the accolades and sellout crowds, Le Gallien grew weary of the restrictions of Broadway's approach by the mid-1920s. She wanted more artistic control and yearned to deliver provocative avant-garde works rather than stale mainstream dramas manufactured only for mass market viability. So at the apex of her Broadway fame in 1926, Le Gallien made the daring move to establish her own acting company outside of the commercial theater system. She founded the Civic Repertory Theater 
gathering a troupe of actors to perform classic plays in rotating repertory at more affordable ticket prices. Though underfunded, the Civic Repertory Theater operated for nearly a decade, staging 34 high-quality productions of everything from Shakespeare to Alice in Wonderland. Le Gallienne directed and starred in most of the plays, earning ongoing critical raves even as the company constantly struggled financially. Still, it provided a platform for Le Gallienne's creative vision and launched the careers of several promising actors like a teenage Helen Hayes. The company was ultimately forced to close down in 1936 due to monetary woes during the Depression era, but it cemented Le Gallienne's reputation as an uncompromising trailblazer, willing to sacrifice fame and fortune for artistic idealism and innovation. The experience also steered her toward her next pioneering phase, experimenting with small theater spaces beyond the Broadway limelight. As the 1930s progressed, Eva Le Gallienne watched her fame as a Broadway starlet decline. She willingly stepped back from commercial success to mount more daring theater productions away from the Great White Way spotlight. Having witnessed the creative freedom and risk-taking possible with her civic repertory theater, Le Gallienne began renting small theaters and opera houses in New York to stage shows on her own terms. In 1932, she launched a season of three plays at the upscale but intimate Guild Theater. Le Gallienne recognized that these smaller venues provided a perfect platform for more experimental works rather than crowd-pleasing blockbusters. Without the pressure to sell thousands of high-priced tickets per night, she could focus solely on artistic innovation. Over the next few years, Le Gallienne staged vivid productions of everything from classic Henrik Ibsen dramas to Oscar Wilde comedies outside of Broadway's orbit, though Off-Broadway had not yet emerged as a defined theatrical scene. Unconcerned with mainstream popularity and economics, she dedicated herself fully to pushing creative boundaries for the pure sake of dramatic art. In 1937, Le Gallienne founded the Folksbian National Theater, later renamed the American National Theater and Academy. This institution became the first nonprofit theater established solely around producing classic plays rather than commercial fare. Le Gallienne maintained tight control over directing and budgets, even as the companies attracted top theatrical talent. Though perpetually underfunded, Le Gallienne's offshore productions were lauded as refreshingly accessible theatrical experiences. Running on little more than raw talent and artistic passion, Le Gallienne cemented her legacy as not just a gifted performer, but an early pioneer of the off-Broadway movement. She cleared ground for the vibrant alternative theater scene that exploded in the coming decades. Though she projected confidence and glamour on stage, Eva Le Gallienne kept her personal life decidedly private. She identified as lesbian from early adulthood, but actively avoided discussing her sexuality in the press during the socially conservative early 20th century. Still, Le Gallienne is known to have been romantically linked to several female actresses of the day. In the early to mid-1920s, Le Gallienne was involved in affairs with both Josephine Hutchinson and Mercedes de Acosta, while her fame on Broadway was skyrocketing. The dalliance with Hutchinson reportedly faded when Hutchinson chose to marry in 1932. Meanwhile, Le Gallienne entered into a steadfast romantic partnership with actress Margaret Perry that endured for the next 14 years until Perry's untimely death. Keen to avoid damage to her soaring career, Le Gallienne took pains to keep her relationship with Perry strictly under wraps. Homosexuality was considered taboo and often severely criticized at the time. Still, those close to Le Gallienne were aware of Perry being her live-in lover. Sadly, the secrecy took an emotional toll on Perry, who apparently longed for more public acknowledgement. Aside from her hidden personal relationships, Le Gallienne socialized widely among theater and art circles in New York. Some of her closest pals were icons like Richard Rogers, Ogden Nash, and notorious free spirit Tallulah Bankhead. However, Le Gallienne intentionally cultivated an air of mystery around her private affairs, even among friends, and rarely opened up. Outside of the footlights, Le Gallienne nurtured low-key hobbies like travel, absorbing foreign languages, and adapting overseas stage plays for American audiences. She seemed to prioritize her creative endeavors above all else in life. Though she inspired great affection from those near to her, Le Gallienne's first love remained theater as she devoted endless energy to pushing the dramatic arts forward during her lengthy career. Right up through all, through her later years, Eva Le Gallienne continued guarding her personal world 
firmly out of the spotlight. While her talents left an indelible mark on Broadway and beyond, she ensured that her intimate relationships and inner self, known only to the select few she fully trusted. While Eva Le Gallienne stepped back from the regular Broadway grind and by the late 1930s, she continued to act sporadically on stage and in the occasional film for decades beyond her early fame. Though dedicated foremost to directing and producing, she took on the lead role in the National Theater's production of Alice in Wonderland in the 1940s, which later toured internationally. In the 1950s, Le Gallienne enjoyed renewed acclaim when she returned to Broadway to star opposite actor Basil Rathbone in The Cherry Orchard. She also made rare film appearances like 1956's The Swan, playing a princess coaching a young princess, reprising a role she had famously performed on stage decades earlier. As years advanced, Le Gallienne became more selective about stage roles, though she racked up periodic acclaim. In 1964, she starred opposite Helen Hayes in Dear Liar, portraying the sharp-tongued British actress Mrs. Patrick Campbell. The role marked Le Gallienne's final stage performance in a career spanning some 50 years. In Le Gallienne's later life, she became increasingly reclusive as she endured various health issues, including arthritis and vision problems. The fiercely independent Le Gallienne had never married or had children to support her. Though she maintained some close friendships, her public presence diminished. Outside of a cameo playing herself in the 1970 film, Start the Revolution Without Me, Le Gallienne lived quietly focusing on writing novels and poetry rather than acting projects. Ever the trailblazer, she did make history one last time in 1982 when named the first widely recognized cultural figure to identify as lesbian on national television. After her many creative risks and barrier-breaking endeavors across the 20th century, Eva Le Gallienne died peacefully at her home in Connecticut in 1991. She was 92 years old, leaving behind an unparalleled legacy as a woman who shaped American theater through raw vision and unrelenting innovation. While Eva Le Gallienne first garnered fame as a marquee name on the Broadway stage, her most enduring impact came from pioneering the off-Broadway theater movement. By cultivating small production houses and niche audiences, Le Gallienne made bold creative risks and nurtured young talent in ways that fundamentally expanded and elevated American theater. Notably, the legendary acting career of Helen Hayes kicked off largely due to Le Gallienne giving the aspiring performer opportunities on stage while Hayes was still a teenager. Over years working together in Le Gallienne's theater companies in the 1920s, Hayes credited Le Gallienne as her cherished mentor in the techniques of voice, movement, and character understanding that led to her becoming the First Lady of American Theater. Beyond advancing individual careers like Hayes, Le Gallienne introduced conceptual, flexible staging aesthetics that brought a new level of intimacy to the audience experience. She proved that small venues could foster more daring, provocative productions that need not rely on extravagant visuals the way Broadway shows tended to. In this way, Le Gallienne set the template for the modern off-Broadway ethos. By focusing on artistic idealism over commercial considerations with her theater companies, Le Gallienne greatly expanded public accessibility to serious classic dramas and avant-garde works. She understood that nurturing a devoted niche audience could empower more creative risks. Costs were kept low by running stripped-down shows on tight budgets fueled mostly by passion. Le Gallienne's influence can be seen in countless playwrights, directors, and performers who found their voice off-Broadway. The thriving landscape of small professional theaters today that drives so much experimentation and diversity is a realization of the scene first sparked by Le Gallienne nearly a century ago. More than a star actress of her age, her vision and leadership helped transform the soul of American theater permanently.